Hey everyone, welcome to Aftermath TV. We are a man down once again, but that's okay. The show will go on because we have Nug and Jimmy Cordero is here with us. Yeah, man. Yeah. We're good. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. You're back. Yeah. Anthony's away. You're back. I'm away next week. We're just rotating. We're just well, rotating around. I'm here, so don't right. I'll be yeah. the I'll be like the consistent factor Perfect. throughout the, the week. Yeah. The one constant of aftermath. <laughs> the glue <laughs> that holds it together. There you go. Um, let's talk about some pretty big news that's going around WWE mm -hmm. right now. Brock Lesnar is going back to MMA. So I want to talk to you guys about what this means for the Universal title itself. It's tough to say. We haven't seen the Universal title for so <laughs> I know, right? long. I Brock forgot Lester? it's even around. Who's that? Uh, so does it hurt the title? No. I mean, it's already hurt. I think the title's already hurt by not being on television, by not being defended at pay-per-view events. You know, it used to be every 30 days you have to defend that title. Mm -hmm. Apparently the rules don't apply to the Universal title or the current champion. So I don't think it hurts the title that much. Although, should he lose, does that mean this other guy is now the Universal champion? It's, a, it's an interesting, it's, it's a very much a catch-22 situation because at first, like I said before, I was on board with the idea of not having the champion on every week, mm -hmm. right. making it special appearances, showing up at pay-per-views to defend the title, but he's not even doing that. We're not even getting Paul Heyman to come out to represent him, at least to say something on television, here's what's happening with the Universal Champion. And now him moving back to MMA obviously puts another huge question mark on it. Uh, it's it's interesting. Does it hurt the Universal Championship? Yes, but at the same time, there are ways to make it relevant again. And I think in the long run, it's going to become very much in the forefront. Uh, I have my hamsters on the wheel. I have some theories going through my head. I can't wait to spill them. <laughs> When's Brock losing that title? When do you guys think? I I want to see it at SummerSlam, but every time we've wanted to see it happen or we <laughs> think it should happen, it never does. So I would like to see it happen at SummerSlam. I would like to see it happen in a very grand fashion. So I want to see it on a big event I'm like sure, SummerSlam. I'm sure counting on WWE, it, it will. Yeah. Uh, I was I was on board with that until like earlier today. Uh, I Again, there's the hamster on the wheel. The longer it stays off television, the angrier the audience is going to yeah. get, and the more people are going to be so anti. They're already anti Brock. Yeah. But they're going to be even more so. Well, maybe what I'd like to see is maybe the WWE uh, offer an ultimatum to Brock. Uh, him and Paul Heyman decide that they're going to hold the Universal Championship hostage. So the WWE decides to hold a tournament to crown a new Universal Champion. Now you have technically two Universal Championships. Uh, Brock says, I never lost the title. Then you have your new champion face Brock somewhere down the line, sure. maybe at WrestleMania, to unify the championship. That can happen, too, if they just strip the title off Brock because no one ever beat Brock and he can just come back there whenever. So. Secretly, I think Jimmy is now a part of WWE creative team. He because might be. I feel like that's probably going to happen. You never know. <laughs> um, does it hurt WWE with Brock going back to MMA? I mean, oh. you just said he's not loved in the WWE universe, but... I don't think so, and He's I think face. I think that's part of it. Right. I think the, the the people that are angry make this even better because there are fans on both sides, the MMA side and the WWE side, that just want to see Brock Lesnar get the crap kicked out of him. And when it happens, those people are going to be very happy. When it happens and Brock does lose that Universal title, whoever brings it home to WWE is going to be loved immediately. Well, it's a good point, and... Does that go to say whoever does beat Brock? Yeah, now that's the face of WWE. It's, that's it, a big... It depends, on, it depends on who it is, of course. <coughs> if Roman. It's, if, it's, <laughs> if it is Roman Reigns, which I would be perfectly fine with, yeah. of course, there's that audience out there that will lose their lunch if uh, Roman Reigns were, the, were to be the one to defeat Brock Lesnar for the Universal Championship. But going back to uh, the audience and them liking Brock, I think it's, it's funny. It's, he's in this weird kind of... Bermuda Triangle here where the MMA the MMA purists, the, the hardcore mm -hmm. MMA fans dislike him because he does the pro wrestling. And then you got the diehard purist pro, pro wrestling fans who dislike him because he bounces back and forth. But he's a benefit to both. Right. Uh, he's a benefit most of all to Brock Lesnar. That's who comes out on top in all of this. Now, is it a benefit to WWE? And I was reading this, that this is what WWE marketing is maybe hoping for that Brock becomes the new MMA champion, and whoever defeats Brock for the Universal title will now technically be someone who beat the face of WWE and the face of MMA. It, yeah, 
Yeah. It's kind it's, of like, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the best of both worlds. I mean, like, the WWE is a global brand that promotes themselves as such, mm -hmm. and they're always looking to expand their audience. Now, there's a lot of uh, MMA fans who, whether they like to admit it or not, are crossover fans, but, but, you know, they don't want to admit that they're fans of professional wrestling. I don't know why that stigma is still attached. I no idea. You know, but it, it, it helps expand the WWE audience, and it'll help expand the MMA audience because whether they like it or not, Brock Lesnar sells tickets. Yep. He sells pay-per-views. And both companies will benefit. That's right. And I liked your guys' answer to this because we were kind of talking about this off camera. Um, for people like me who think Brock Lesnar, you know, lives a pretty good lifestyle right now, makes good money, you know, doesn't make an appearance every single night in WWE, why make that transition now to MMA? Well, he's, he's getting older and he knows he's got a couple, at least one uh, MMA fight left in him. So why not do it now before you can't? Why not do it now? Uh, you're getting paid uh, to not show up a lot for WWE. Why not, in that time when you're not showing up, go off and make some money doing this? It's that, all about cash. It's all about cash, and it's also about that competitive nature. And, uh, yes, the cash is a very important part of it. And making that cash doing something that you like, especially someone who's a competitive like him, he has that fighter's spirit. You know, you've played, you know, right. competitive soccer. Every, we've all played competitive sports, but at that level, there's a different gear that these guys get into, and they have to get in there and do what they want to do. It's hunger. It's it, hunger it is. For it. it's, it's a constant hunger. And once you lose that hunger, you know, you might as well just pack it You're in. doing anything to get it back. I appreciate that comment. Okay, so guys, let's move on to the other match that's going to be happening. Extreme Rules. We are going to see AJ Styles and... Rusev, happy Rusev Day, happy by the Rusev way. Day. Yeah, I mean, we're going to throw that out there. On Rusev Day. <laughs> um, what's going to be different about this matchup, and why should we all be excited about it? This is going to be similar to when we saw that match between AJ Styles and Brock Lesnar. Mm -hmm. It's AJ Styles, who, you know, high flying, very technically skilled, against just a monster. He, he's so big. He's a wide man. <laughs> and he's very powerful, and he can hurt you in a lot of ways. And if he gets a hold of AJ, he's going to hurt AJ. I don't know if he's necessarily going to beat AJ. I would love it. I would love to see this happen and put a championship title on Rusev would be fantastic. I don't know if today's the day, but I'd love to see it. It's just going to be a really fun match to watch AJ Styles bounce around against this brick wall. I think it's going to surprise a lot of people, especially Rusev, because uh, the comparison you made to Brock Lesnar being a big beast, he is. He, like, he's a brick wall. But at the same time, for a guy his size, he's very agile mm -hmm. and can do things that right. Brock Lesnar maybe can't do. So this match is going to be an interesting contrast in styles, but at the same time, I think he's going to match up well with AJ Styles. And I'm going to uh, probably tick off a lot of Rusev fans right here in thinking that uh, maybe he's not quite ready for that spotlight yet. He might not be ready, but you know what? I'll pick Rusev just because it's a heart pick. Interesting, but for the WWE, who would they benefit the most from winning this match? I think AJ Styles. I think AJ Styles is doing a great job. He's the cover boy for the video game this year. He's been a fantastic champion for SmackDown. He's the face that runs the place, AJ Styles. And he's still, in my opinion, best in the world at what he does. Has Ray J... Ray J... Ray J. <laughs> Ray J. <laughs> Has AJ's that. reign reached expectations from the universe, from everyone in WWE? Oh, 100%. He's beyond the expectations. Yeah, I think uh, they found lightning in the bottle with this Rusev Day thing and uh, capitalized while, well, you know, the iron's hot. Yeah, and they're going with it, right? Why yeah, wouldn't exactly. You? How about other wrestlers? Do you guys think that they're like, AJ's the guy? I think so. I think AJ's the one, you, when you ask other wrestlers what their current dream matches are, AJ's always on the list. Everybody wants to test themselves against mm -hmm. AJ Styles. AJ's the one yep. to beat then. AJ is the one to beat. All, All right, right I, guys, we have more Extreme Rules after the break, so there's lots more to be said about what's happening on the next pay-per-view. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys after the break. Welcome back to Aftermath TV, everyone. Uh, we're going to see Seth Rollins take on Dolph Ziggler in a match that will take them 30 minutes. Let's go through this. What do we think? Um, I like Seth Rollins here just because he has been incredible lately, and he has the stamina to do it. We've seen him yeah, in some yeah. long-standing matches so far this year. I, so I, I think this is going to be the match for the whole show. Yep. I really think this is going to steal it because these two guys are so good and well-conditioned. And right. doing an Ironman match... Just as many pinfalls or submissions as you can in 30 minutes, 
it's going to be the match to watch. It's going to be an, a fantastic exhibition of skill. And the fact that Drew McIntyre is still at ringside, mm -hmm. I love it. Do, maybe, maybe Seth Rollins gets someone to help him uh, even up the numbers, mm -hmm. or maybe not. Maybe Seth can do this on his own. I don't care. I'm still picking Dolph Ziggler. Really? I love okay. this pairing of him and McIntyre. I'm, I'm truly enjoying Dr Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. My only concern is, again, yes, I love the concept of an Iron Man match. I love the idea of the most pinfalls in the allotted time, the, you know, determines the winner. But an Iron Man match of 30 minutes, I prefer, I know the, hour. the attention span yeah. of the audience today is not what it used to be, but I prefer a one-hour Iron Man match, but, you know, reminiscent of Sean and, Brett. and Brett at WrestleMania 12, that sort of, that's an Iron Man match. These guys had a 30-minute match almost on Raw. Yeah. So yeah. why is this so different? You know, I, make it longer, at least 45. Why do you think it's not an hour? Well, because there's so many other things on the show. Yeah. You, you can't have this take up an hour when there's so much well, else going on. Well, is this on. going back to kind of less is more? Should this be an hour and maybe not have three matches that aren't worth the title? There goes the, there goes the argument whether going back to co-branded pay-per-views was a good idea because if this was a Raw-specific pay-per-view, you may be, be able to do sure. an hour. But now you've got you got you to gotta bring on superstars from both brands so it, it kind of you know muddies the waters make a little room, bit. Make room for everybody. you got to make room. All right, guys, and then moving on, we've got Shinsuke Nakamura taking on Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Why should people be interested and excited about this matchup? I think it's two guys that are, to use the word they always use to describe Jeff Hardy, they're both enigmas. Mm -hmm. They're both weirdos, everybody. <laughs> they're both total weirdos. And here we have weirdo versus weirdo. Who can out-weird each other isn't nearly as important as to who can out perform each other, who can out-wrestle each other. Mm -hmm. Jeff Hardy is uh, a veteran. Yep. He's uh, been to the top before. He's had titles before. Shinsuke Nakamura needs that title to legitimize himself in the WWE. And I think this is Nakamura's title. It, it's, it's an interesting uh, uh, matchup here in the sense that, like you said, if they kind of mirror image each other. You know, if you go back to Jeff Hardy and, and his... What did you, how did you refer to it? Weirdo. Weirdo. Okay. But <laughs> just, just being odd and enigma and out there, and anybody who followed uh, Shinsuke Nakamura's career in Japan, very similar in the sense that he was completely untraditional from what Japanese wrestling was at the time. So he was an enigma as well there. Now you're bringing these two kind of, you know, similar mirror images against each right. other. I think it's an interesting matchup. I think they, their styles are going to blend well together. It's just that I'm worried that, I hate to say it, Jeff, but I think age is going to play a factor. I think so, this too. Yeah. Nakamura is going to yeah. win this. I feel like that's everyone's fan favorite. Yeah. And then moving on, we've talked a little bit in past shows about the SmackDown uh, tag team titles. Mm -hmm. And is this the Bludgeon Brothers' opportunity to solidify themselves as the tag team on the blue brand? It, it really is. I mean, you've got a very seasoned team in Hell, Team Hell No uh, and the return of Kane to working with Daniel Bryan and Daniel Bryan, who everybody loves, and there is no better opportunity for the Bludgeon Brothers to destroy everyone's dreams than by mm -hmm. beating Team Hell No. I think them being in the ring with Kane and Daniel Bryan, I think it's a great opportunity for the Bludgeon Brothers to show off what they can do to be in the ring with two guys that are that good. It's going to help them a lot, but I I don't know. Is the momentum on the team of, you know what, forget it, Bludgeon Brothers. I'm going with the Bludgeon, Bludgeon Brothers. Bludgeon Brothers, I'm hard Bludgeon Brothers. I don't know. Um, uh, we all know that uh, Kane has other interests outside the he WWE, does. and uh, maybe this is his last kick at the can, so why not? You know, have a nice little run with the championship with his good buddy, Team Hell No, sure. Daniel Bryan. Why not? I always sometimes think about if the WWE takes in what the universe would probably want to happen. And I feel like Daniel Bryan right now is the happening guy. So I kind of am Team Hell No because I feel like it would just have an electric kind of response if nice Team Hell No feel won. Good yes, a feel-good moment. Yes, a feel-good moment. That's exactly yes. what yes, I'm trying to say. Yes, but feel-good moments are not what the Bludgeon Brothers are about. They're no. about feel bad moments, and this is going to be a well, feel bad moment. Okay. Team Hell No brings a feel good moment to a feel bad moment. Absolutely. Team. Yeah. Right. Okay, yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, uh, raw, raw tag teams, the B team, which I've been loving lately because yeah. they've been um, making fun of a little bit, uh, Bray Wyatt, Matt Hardy, yeah. which I'm starting to grow a little old of, so I yeah. appreciate it. What can we expect from these two? Uh, it's going teams? to be hilarious. I think so. I too. think it's going to be very entertaining. I don't know if it's time for a change. I don't know if it's time for the B team. Personally, I really like Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel, and I'd love to see them with the tag titles. 
uh, only to set it up for the revival to crush their dreams. Right. I, I, I agree. I think that what we see here with the B team, and I'm going to make this draw this, this analogy, is they're similar to Rusev in the sense that they've caught on to something. They've grasped the WWE universe in a, with this B team thing and the, the whole mocking of, uh, uh, of Bray Wyatt and, and Matt Hardy. It's just that I don't see this being a long term thing and right. something that will be sustainable. So, um, you, you know, enjoy the success for now. Quickly, do you guys think the universe is getting tired of this whole show? I, I think it's starting to wane. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree. I think they want to see more of the Woken universe getting a little bit more Woken? More Woken. More Woken. More Woken. More woke. Okay. Woker. All right, guys. Uh, even more Extreme Rules talk when we're back after break. Don't go anywhere. I can take woke a -er. More Woken. -er. <laughs> Extreme Rules will also see Nia Jax take on Alexa Bliss for the Raw Women's Championship. Mm -hmm. Who has the advantage going into an Extreme Rules matchup? I think last night Alexa tried to get the advantage and failed. Yeah. I think Nia Jax has the advantage with her power, with her size, with her strength. Uh, but the introduction of weapons makes it, I think, more Alexa's game. I think Alexa can defend this title if she's got an arsenal of weapons at her ready. Right. I think it actually benefits Nia Jax more in an Extreme Rules match because the champion's advantage no longer exists. So now you, uh, the count out is not in play. The disqualification is not in play for her to retain her title. She actually has to pin Nia Jax, which is going to be a... Hard thing to do. Yeah. So I think uh, for all the advantages she has with being able to use kendo sticks and whatever she can get her hands on, yeah, you still got to pin her. Okay, I'm starting to see a pattern here with Nia and Alexa, kind of how we saw with AJ Styles and Shinsuke. Mm -hmm. I'm growing a little old and tired of it. Do you think others that are watching these matchups are as well? I think so, but I do think that the audience really loves to hate Alexa Bliss as champion. Okay. I think the fans are behind that. They like seeing her with the title, even though they don't like her very much. She's the one to beat. I really think on on Monday Night Raw, she's the one to beat. And I think uh, um, people are looking forward to other matchups other than Nia Jax. Yes. I mean, like, let's be honest. I, the comparison to, to the AJ Styles, Shinsuke Nakamura is a fair one. Absolutely. There was an interesting Ask Aftermath question that we never really got to in the past few weeks, but it was similar to this, where Roman Reigns was kind of shoved down, shoved down the WWE Universe's throat. Sure. This individual thought the same thing is happening with Alexa Bliss but she doesn't get the negative attention that Roman has been getting. What do you guys think about that? Is that because it's the women's division? Um, I think it's a little bit of column A and column B, yes. <laughs> Partly because it's the women's division, so I think they're cutting her a little bit of slack. Right. Whether they should or not, I think that's still... Yeah, they're should, all should, superstars at the end yeah, of the day, At the end right? of the day, exactly. they should all get... Yeah, and, and also at the same time, I think that people have dug in their heels so much with the Roman thing that uh, uh, they're not digging in their heels quite as hard. With Alexa Bliss. Okay, we've talked about Raw. Let's go over to SmackDown. Carmella and Asuka, which I'm really excited about because I'm ready for Asuka to just snag that championship away from Carmella now. How do you think this is going to play out? Do you think Carmella can do it? I, d I think Carmella can do it with help. And she has help now because mm -hmm. James Ellsworth is back. Right. I think she can do it with help. But if you take Ellsworth out of the picture and no she way. doesn't have that outside interference, mm -hmm. Asuka's going to murder her. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she's ready for Asuka. I don't think James <laughs> Ellsworth is ready for Asuka. Nope. This whole James Ellsworth returning just uh, uh, just rubs me the wrong way. I just it, it, you don't love it. <clears throat> no, I, and it's nothing against him personally. I just think it doesn't add anything to Carmella. Do you think? Uh, do you expect anything to be added tonight on SmackDown? It, oh, uh, stipulation wise, yes. it is just no. Mm -hmm. Let's just have a ladies' championship match. The other ladies' championship match has a bunch of weapons in it. Let's have this one be regular. Ah, there's a stipulation. Just regular match. A regular stipulation. Match. Who would have thought, yeah. eh? Yeah. How extreme. Very extreme. <laughs> um, and guys, there are three matches happening at Extreme Rules with no titles on the line. We kind of talked about this. How an Iron match, an Iron Man match, could be an hour long, mm -hmm. um, but now it's 30 minutes because we have to fit in all sorts of matches. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. what do you guys think about fighting for a? Fighting in a match without a title being given to you, and which one are you most excited about? It's fine. Uh, wrestling mm -hmm. matches yeah. happen all the time that aren't for titles. Right. It's absolutely fine. And wrestling matches happen without stipulations. That's fine. We've got three matches that are basically the six guys that would have been in a multi-person match right. if Brock Lesnar hadn't canceled it. 
So you've got Kevin Owens and Brock, or Kevin Owens and Braun. Braun. You've got Kevin Roman, and, Roman and, and, Bob. and Bob. And Bob. And then the one I'm the most interested in, because I think there's the most drama attached to it, is Finn Balor and Corbin, mm -hmm. uh, Baron Corbin, because Baron Corbin is now representing the authority. And now you have Finn Balor basically fighting the chosen representation of the authority. And should Balor win, you know there's going to be consequences. Going forward, they're going to do everything they can to shut that guy down. And the fans love him. This is a real opportunity for Finn to step up and show what he's all about. Yeah, I'm just not on board with uh, corporate Baron. Yeah. Corporate Corbin? Yeah, Kane yeah. Light. Kane Light. Kane Light. Corporate Kane Light. Yeah, yeah. I, I, that's the only reason I'm not... I kind of liked, I wasn't so interested in Bob and Roman at first until last night's uh, <laughs> major pull apart, which kind of got me a little more interested, but I'm kind of intrigued with Braun and Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens has been the, arguably the most entertaining part of Raw the last couple yep. of weeks Absolutely in his trying been. to dodge Braun, yes. Braun Strowman. And Braun is just growing on me more and more. I know he's over, over huge with the WWE Universe, but to me he's growing on me as a, as a character. I'm getting on board with the character. That, that I'm just curious to see that if Braun wins, and yeah, I'm shout out to JL for this one because we had a conversation about this, how he would escape the cage. Because I don't see Braun doing the traditional walk out the door or climb over the top, rip the door open, or maybe even just grab the steel fence and just pull it open and just... Quickly, now that you're on that tangent... Will Braun have a wow moment? He has to. Yes. Braun will have a, a wow moment, but Kevin Owens is going to win this match. No. He's got, yeah. he's, he's been totaled every week coming up to this. It's time for his come I up. I think he's going to get gonna those win. hands. He's going to win. <laughs> it's almost like when JBL got choke slammed through the floor and crawled out the bottom of the cage to beat the big show. I, I like that he was idea. He the first one on the floor. Well, that's actually probably one of the matches I'm looking forward to the most. And it's funny, like we said, it doesn't matter if you're fighting for a title or not. They're going to nope. be excited. Um, guys, right now, SmackDown Live, there's lots yeah. to look forward to. And Extreme yeah. Rules are just a couple days away. Yeah, I love it. Days away, guys. A lot to be excited about. All right, we'll see you next week. Uh, we'll see if we have the whole crew back. Keep you on your toes. We're going to be All right, see you guys. <laughs>